Um, so yeah, uh, today um, we're going to cover a topic on serving today. Um, but before we do that, I want to I want to pray over today's service. So let's pray, Father God. Father God, we just thank you for this day. Uh, God, we thank you uh, just for who you are, God, for what you do in our lives, for the transformation that takes place. And I pray, Father God, over today's service, God. I pray, God, that hearts would be pierced with your word, God. And people would come to a knowledge of who you are. Let my words quickly diminish. And let your words be set forth. It's in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right, so as, as Pastor JB said, I am the, the uh, youth pastor. Me and my wife are the youth pastor. Actually, Jalen's the youth pastor. Uh, but uh, we are the youth pastors, and uh, we get the privilege of... Um, and the honor every Wednesday to give students the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, and we love serving week in and week out, and we love seeing students' lives forever transformed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a sense of passion when I, when, I, when I go each and every Wednesday, when I go, there's a passion behind what I do, and there's a zeal, and it reminds me of a scripture. It's in Romans uh, chapter 12, verse 11. It says, Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. See, there's a sense of urgency when we serve. We want others to experience the life transformation that we've experienced. See, your kids, they need Jesus. They need authentic followers of Christ. They need truth without a filter. They need people in their lives that really reflect the gospel of Jesus Christ. They don't need another get-together, another pizza party, another game night. They need Jesus, and that's what Jalen and I are going to bring them every Wednesday night. We're going to bring them the gospel. And, and that passion inside me, it stems from what I went through as a child, so I'm going to give you a little bit of my testimony. It's it's a quick, um, a quick uh, overview of my testimony, um, and I want to kind of get into it. But at the age of five, my mom and, and dad got divorced. Um, and I still remember it to this day. I still remember my dad walking out on me. Um, and it, it plays in my mind over and over and over again. Um, and if you don't think that divorce don't affect the kids, it really does. And it hurts. Um, and I became this bitter, angry person, just extremely bitter and angry about life, wondering why my, my daddy walked out on me, wondering why I had to go through what I went through. My mom became addicted to prescription painkillers. Um, she would spend uh, days, even weeks, in her room. Um, I didn't have any guidance in my life. Um, I basically raised myself. Um, and I would run the streets. Um, I, was smoking, I was smoking weed and drinking at the age of 10. Um, and I was doing all these different things. I got introduced. See, when a church isn't there for you, Satan begins to throw these things at you. Because the church didn't do their job. They didn't reach out to me. I was out on my own. So the devil threw some things at me, and I began to take them. And so I began to, what I began to do is I began to uh, found an outlet. My outlet was in hip hop music. Um, and I began to listen to, to Eminem, uh, Lil Wayne, uh, 50 Cent, some of the good rappers still today. Um, <laughs> but I, I began to listen to them, but I didn't realize what the music was doing inside of me. See, music has power. And it begins to change you, and you begin to act upon what it's talking about. So it's talking about drugs and, and sex and all these different things. And, and I begin to act upon those things. Um, and at the age of 16, um, I got I accumulated three felonies, three felony charges. Um, I was sent to the juvenile detention center. Um, I was supposed to be tried as an adult, but God. Um, I was 17 when I went to court. Um, 
like I said, they were supposed to try me as an adult. They didn't. Um, and then I got put on probation for a year um, and did a lot of stupid things while I was on probation, staying past my curfew, doing just stupid stuff. I ended up getting into a wreck um, while I was out on a Saturday night when I wasn't supposed to be. I was supposed to be home at 6, um, but I ended up going out anyways. Um, and we were street racing, actually. And um, a cop pulled up behind us and started chasing us. And so we, we took off. Uh, there was four of us in the car, um, no seat belts. Um, we went around this curb on North First, if you know where North, North First is, that underneath that bridge. Um, and the car flipped. And it flipped seven times. Uh, and just keep in mind that a week prior to this, one of my friends in high school, um, he actually had died a week prior in a car wreck. Um, the truck, they were in the back of a truck. There was four, four or five of them in the back of the truck. The guy that was driving was drunk. The truck flipped over, landed on top of him, and then he ended up suffocating and dying. Um, so, but, but God was watching out for me, man. He knew the plan and the purpose that he had for me. And um, I had no seatbelt on. I could have died, all the windows busted out. We had, we had just filled up with a gas tank. Uh, and luckily the car didn't blow up. I mean, there's sparks flying everywhere. Um, I remember blacking out. I remember saying, this is it, I'm, I'm dead, I'm done. Um, I didn't get a chance to, you know, because I would hear the gospel, um, but I didn't get a chance to, to make myself right with God. Um, and it's only through Jesus, only through Jesus. So it reminds me of a, a scripture in 2 Corinthians uh, 1, 3 through 4, and it says, Praise be the God, a Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion, the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. So there was a reason behind my affliction. The reason why I went through what I went through to comfort those who are going to the exact same thing. And that's why, I, you know, for the privilege, I'm so passionate about youth because I know some of these kids have gone through the exact same things I've gone through. And, I, and, and I'm thankful that God has given me the opportunity to speak into their lives and, and to really give them uh, hope. So it brings me to my first point, and my first point is this. We serve to bring God glory. Not us. We serve to bring him glory. It reminds me of First Peter chapter 4, verse 10 through 11. It says, As each of us has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Our service is for the Lord. See, if you don't get this right, then none of the, what I talk about the rest of the time isn't going to make sense to you. Because you've got to know who you're doing it for. We don't do what we do to bring glory upon ourselves. Matthew tells us this. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. In Colossians 3, uh, verses 23, it says, Work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. See, my wife and I know at the end of the day, we don't do what we do for Connect Church. We don't do what we do for anybody in this building. We do what we do for God. God's called us to a mission. He's called us, and he, I'm going to be obedient in what he's called me to do. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care if someone is talking bad about me on the side or, or if I feel a certain way about this person or that person. Look, at the end of the day, I'm doing it for the Lord. So this, my second point is this. We serve to help others. See this platform that I'm on? I don't need this platform to preach the gospel. I preach the gospel to people at my work. I preach the gospel to anybody I encounter. I don't need this platform. This plat platform means nothing to me. 
if we turn to uh, Philippians uh, 2, verses 3 through 8, it says, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have the mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who through he was in the form of God, did not count equally with God in a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in likeness of man, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even on the cross. So sometimes we just, we're just going through life. We're just going through the motions. Not really like living the gospel out. I think at times we we forget where we came from. We forget where God brought us from. And we go through the motions. I've done this. Look, there's people out there that need Jesus. But yet we come in here on a Sunday morning and we sit here and we listen to a sermon sing three worship songs, and then go home and do nothing. We don't give anybody the gospel. Too afraid? Do you realize what the apostles had to go through? What they had to endure? They were whipped, they were beaten, and killed for the gospel. But we, were you good enough to not go out there and preach the gospel? Who are we to say, That we can't give people the gospel. The same gospel that changed each and every one of you li- your lives in here. And maybe you don't know who Jesus is in here, but you will. You call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. Because when I was 20 years old, I was through with life, su- suicidal attempts, suicidal thoughts. I was outside my apartment complex, ready to give up. I said, Lord, all I, I don't know what else to do. I need you. Come into my life and change me. Show me that you're real. And let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit fell upon me, and my life was forever changed. And your life can be forever changed. You need to turn to Jesus. See, a lot of times we turn to the world to try to fix our problems with drugs and alcohol and all these different things. Those, those are never going to fulfill you. The only thing that's going to fulfill you is the Jesus. That's it. And I turned my life to Jesus. I gave, man, I'm telling you right now, radical transformation. Radical is the norm. We think that we, think that we could just come to church and, and go, to, go to a small group on, 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 on Wednesday night, Thursday night, and think that we're good. We're going to get into heaven. No, the only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through him. And it brings me to my third point. And it's, it's, everybody's heard of, we love because he first loved us, right? I kind of made this up, but we serve because he first served us. He is the example that we are to show to others. His life showed us what true service was and is. Matthew 20 through 28 says, For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. The gospel. All the weight of humanity was on his back. Romans tells us, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. No one is righteous, no, not one. Jesus died and rose on the third day. We are made righteous before God through the blood of Jesus Christ. We are now called children of God. He is the only way to the Father. 
It says that he has come that they may have life and life abundantly. And I ain't talking about wealth. See, a lot of preachers out here, they want to talk about money and, oh, if you come to God, you're going to be financially blessed. Let me tell you something. I'm blessed because God saved me from addiction. God saved me from the things that was tormenting me day and night. Demons that were tormenting me day and night. Right. He saved me from that blessing. I don't need no blessing. The, only, the blessing, he already gave me my blessing. Yeah. I'm made alive in him. I get to experience eternity with him one day. Right. I don't care about this life. This life means nothing to me. We're just traveling through this world, preaching the gospel to people that need it and need to hear the truth. And that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to preach the truth. I don't, need, I, don't need the, I don't need the money, man. The money means nothing to me, man. And it shouldn't mean nothing to you. Because all you should need is Jesus. Jesus is going to fulfill that in you. I promise you. You know, I went through the hardest season of my life these past few months. The hardest season. And I believe God was doing things in me to humble me, to help me see. I, I was severely depressed, um, and it was hard. Life was hard. And uh, I was having panic attacks at work, and I didn't tell anybody. And uh, I was dealing with some, some crazy stuff. But I'm, I'm glad that there was people in my life that God put in there to help me through those situations. First of all, my wife she was there for me day in and day out. She would pray with me. She would come in the closet with me. I'd be, I'd be praying. I'd be trying to worship, and I'd be crying. Like, God, get me through this. God, get me through this. She was there for me. She'd open the door. She'd pray with me and hug me and love me. I get, I get emotional because it's I didn't have that growing up, man. I didn't have a father. I didn't have a mother to love on me and care about me, care for me. But God's put people in my life like that to help me. I had friends come over and love on me and care for me. Took me to the doctor. I didn't have any of that, man. And that's what we're called to do. We're called to serve people and love people, man. Where they're at, give people the gospel, man. That's the only thing that's going to save them, man. None of, nothing in this world is going to save you, I promise you. No amount of drugs, no amount of alcohol, no amount of, of, of money is going to make you feel better. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. I just want people to get it. I want people to understand. That's why each and every week, man, I get to preach to students. I don't sugarcoat nothing. They're going to hear the truth. Why? Because I love them. A lot of people think that love is just accepting them. Accepting their rhetoric and what they believe. No. Love is telling them the truth. Love is giving them the gospel and backing it up with scripture. Telling them, hey, this is the truth. The word of God is the truth. Because it's inspired by him. It's the very words of God written on a piece of paper. The gospel changes lives. Jesus changes lives. I just want us to, to take a moment and just reflect on our lives right now. And reflect where we're at. And just understand that We can't do this life without Jesus. We can't. I'm just, I get up on the stage and, and, I, and I give a word to y'all. Some people will hear it and they won't receive it. 
and to walk out of this room and to continue to live their life. Some people will hear the word and they'll take off running with it. And a life will be forever changed from this day forward. I just want lives to be changed. For people to hear the truth. Let's pray. God, I just thank you for who you are, God. I thank you, God, that we don't have to do life alone. You are here with us to comfort us, to love us, to give us hope. You have placed people in our lives to, to love on us. I just pray over each and every person in here today. That they wouldn't walk out of here just hearing another message. But it would take what you have said today and their lives would be transformed. Lord, take their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh to be able to receive the message of Christ and Christ crucified. I pray, Father God, that they would understand that no amount of anything this world has to offer will ever satisfy them, but only you. You give them hope. Lives are changed. And I pray, God, that they can see you through the lens of who you really are and who you can be in their lives, that you do love them and you do care for them. You care for them enough to send your son, your only son, to die on a cross, to be beaten, to be mocked, and to be nailed on a cross for us. A death that we deserve. You said, forgot, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. Thank you, Jesus. He didn't just stop there. He rose three days later. He came out of that tomb. So I pray, Father God, that they, they can experience life and life abundantly. They can experience what it means to be really radically transformed, that that would be the norm here in America. Lord, I thank you for your presence. I thank you, God, for your love. I thank you for your mercy for your forgiveness, for your unconditional love. And I thank you for these people. I thank you that they war were born on purpose for a purpose. That they do have meaning, that they do have value in you. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you. It is in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Good job, Junior. Sharing your heart. Sharing your heart. I tell you what, if that doesn't motivate you to make sure that every young person, every teenager, every student shows up on Wednesday nights at 910 South Treadway, I don't know, I don't know what will. 
I don't know what will you. Because that's the transformation of what having Jesus in your life does. That's the transformation. And, and what he didn't share, and, and, and he's maybe shared before, is, you know, him and Jalen, how old were you when you had him, Alina? 17 years old when they had him, Alina. Then they had Brayson, and now they've got Brexton. You know, and, and sometimes I think we can look at, at that over there and say, man, isn't that like the perfect little family? I mean, he's good looking, she's pretty, they got great kids, you know. And you look at it and you say, man, I, I wish I had that. But the question I have for you today is, are you willing to do the struggle to get that? You know what I mean? Like when I look at them, I see a testimony of the goodness of God in the struggle. I see the testimony of a little girl who's all of a sudden a mom having to make adult choices, right? But I've talked to Jalen before in junior. That little girl in Molina, that little girl saved their life. Because what the world would look at and what the world would say is a mistake, I can't believe you would be that irresponsible. How could you ever do that? You know, parents being disappointed, upset, the whole nine yards. But when I look at that, and I look at you, Emelina, I see a blessing from God. I see a child that was born on purpose for a purpose. You know what I mean? I see that God chose Jalen and Junior to raise her up to be the woman of God that God's called her to be. But that doesn't come without the perfect plan of God. And the perfect plan of God is he takes every situation that the world looks at and says that's a mistake or you shouldn't have done that. And he takes that situation and he turns it to the glory of who he is. Turns it to the glory of who he is. So I want to encourage you, if you're going through a struggle right now, maybe your, your marriage isn't where it needs to be. Maybe your relationship with your children isn't where it needs to be. Maybe you feel like you've made so many mistakes or you're currently in such a big mistake that there's no way God can use that. I want to tell you God can use that. Because he took a guy who has three felonies, who has no reason, no purpose, no dad, no mom, no relationships, no encouragement, no destination, no destiny, no purpose, no plan, no vision, no understanding. And he took him to the cross and he said, Junior, if you come to this cross, I will make sure that you will serve me every day for the rest of your life. I thank you that in this situation, Junior, God has used you to impact lives. Listen, if only one person comes to know Jesus because of your struggle, was it worth it? Heck yeah, it was worth it. So if you're sitting there and you say, man, that's great for Junior, that's great for Jalen, good for them. No, it's good for you. It's good for you, and it doesn't mean it's easy. Listen, being a Christian, loving Jesus, it ain't easy. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm going to just talk about myself for a minute. Like, I waited till I met Amanda to do things married people do. You know what I mean? I was 26 years old. And everybody told me, there's no way you'll be able to make it. You know what I mean? Like, no way. It's like I was trying to run a race. You know what I mean? Like, no way. But the Lord was faithful in a promise that he gave me when I was 12 years old. And the promise that he gave me is, and it was, well, I was talking to my dad. And the promise that God gave me is that I would be married and that I would love my wife more than I love any other person and that I would be everything she's ever needed in a spouse. That's hard, all right? That's a big promise for a 12-year-old. But through that promise that God gave me, I never let go. I never let go. Through the drugs, through the addictions, through stupidity, <laughs> through not getting pulled over, uh, you know what I mean? But he showed himself faithful. So I want to let you know, if you're sitting out there right now and you don't think the God he's talking about is the God for you, you're lying to yourself. Because he wants to take your situation he wants to take where you're at. He wants to take your mistake, and he wants to use that to the glory of him. See, Junior does what he does, not for the glory of Junior. Junior does what he does for the glory of Christ and Christ alone. So in any area that you're serving in this church with the volunteer time come, or the servant dinner coming, no matter what area you serve, if one person comes to know Jesus, it was worth it. It was worth it. It was 100% worth it. If you're in the nursery and you're not even in here and somebody comes to know Jesus, thank you for taking care of that kiddo so that they could have the opportunity to know who Jesus is. Amen?